A deeper understanding into China's economy. We're now joined by Chen Zhao. He is the chief global strategist at Alpine Macro. Thanks for joining us. Hi. China's economy, as you know, grew at 6.8 percent in the first quarter, beating same period last year and expectations. What's behind this, do you think? I think there are two things I think uh, that it's very important everybody need to pay attention to. The first thing, of course, is the headline GDP number that actually has met the expectation. But beneath it, uh, there are two things that, that have caught my attention anyway. The first thing is really the private sector investment has, the growth of private sector investment has exceeded the state, state investment meaning that the private sector business activity is accelerating and has been becoming a main driving force behind the economy. That is always very important for any economy because private business is the endogenous uh, uh, driving force for any economy. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you look at the uh, consumption growth, of course, we don't have the private consumption as a whole, but we do have a proxy for that, which is the retail sales growth is about, a, about over 10%. That is the first indication to me that the Chinese economy is making a transition from a so-called investment-driven growth process to a consumption-driven process. I think this is the beginning of the transition, but the, the impact is very noticeable. I think the key two takeaways from the number is, is this. Private business activity is picking up. Consumption is becoming a key driving force behind the economy. I think that's it. How does this play against uh, debt levels, which are actually rising in China, and also the perceived housing bubble? Well, the problem with, with all this debt, I don't want to get into that. It's a pretty uh, complicated issue because I have written about this for a long time. I personally do not believe that Chinese economy has a debt problem at all. I, I don't agree with the fact that lots of people talking about the Chinese uh, system is very risky because of the leverage. The problem with that judgment is this. If you look at around the world, the countries that are with the highest debt GDP ratio is Singapore, followed by Japan, and followed by China. These are very high savings economy. And if you think about Singapore, it has never had any crisis. If you think about Japan, it has never had a cr financial crisis. So the problem with the high debt is because all these countries that I mentioned have very high savings rate. If you have a very high savings rate, you need a banking system to intermediate all this vast pool of savings into investment. That's why all these high saving countries always have a high debt level. It doesn't tell you anything at all. So I totally disagree with the people, and including the Chinese government and people, People's Bank of China, some officials from there too, that's saying that because we have a high debt level, we need to crack down on credit growth. This is a totally wrong misunderstanding about macroeconomic from A to Z. So I don't believe that is a problem, but if they think that is a problem, they're going to pay the price uh, on, on due price that they have to pay. So that's my answer. We don't have a, a saving, uh, debt problem. Um, in terms of the debt ratio, actually, if you look at recent number, the Chinese debt GDP ratio actually has come down because of the growth rate becoming, beginning to pick up. So I believe if you want to reduce debt to GDP level, the best way to do that is to expand your GDP. In other words, in other words to expand your denominators. Forget about nominators, because right now the policymakers focus too much on nominators and ignoring the denominators. You need to expand denominators so that it can bring down the ratio very quickly. I End of the story. I can't let you go without asking you about the timing and the impact of the reserve ratio cut. What's behind the reasoning here? I think that's, they, they are moving a, a one step forward and two step backwards in terms of uh, the so-called monetary policy. They always believe that we have too much of a, a debt. That's why they always try to tighten monetary policy too excessively. Once they tighten monetary policy too excessively, the economy loses momentum, so they have to ease. I think this is one of the period where uh, they, yes, the number is great. The GDP number is great, but this is a past number. This is what has already happened. But what's going forward is troublesome because if you look at stock market, stock market have lost uh, three days in a row, a stock market being down three days in a row, and you have a whole bunch of macro indicators that is also softening. 
So that's why I think they cannot curtail credit creation too excessively. And I think the cutting of the reserve requirement is the response to that uh, unduly uh, tight monetary policy that is causing credit creation to slow down. I think that's a response to that. This is the right move. But I hope that they are not sort of a trying to artificially depress credit going forward. That's, that's, that's my take. Well, Chen Zhao, thank you so much. We appreciate your insight with Alpine Macro. Thank you.